All right, guys, so we're putting together one of these floating blinds. Got a couple guys holding the sides up. You can see he's got it marked right there, B to B. Got the four bolts in on that side. Now he's over here putting the bolts in. You want to try to put the bolts in from the back side so that it's easier to get to the nuts and the washers on the outside of there, which he's already done. They all line up perfectly, and you see it's got lined up A to A. And once you get this main cross beam attached, once that's attached from pontoon to pontoon, them guys can let go in the back. It's not moving from there, and you can work with this thing. So that's what we're doing right now. Step one is to put the main uh, two by two piece of heavy extrusion across from pontoon to pontoon and tighten up all the bolts. That's step one. that that's done and, and secure across there they can let go in the back it's going to free stand on its own from that point on now you can go there and start putting your braces across the front up top right there and in the very back the one that you duck your head under that's what we're starting on next putting on the top braces all right guys so what we're doing is that brace up there in the very front right up there that goes all the way across we bolted it in first now we're coming to the back um, actually the entrance the other end of the blind that you and putting up the brace across the top that runs from here down there now you'll notice they got welded letters on here this is an F to an F it makes it nice and easy on the other side there's an E to an E so you know where these are going and we're gonna bolt this up across the top that's the brace you'll duck your head to go under when you go in the blind but that'll square our blind up and make all the rest of the braces nice and easy to put in. The holes will all match up once you square the blind up by putting this brace in second. We typically try to put the bolts in from the inside and let the nuts stick out on the outside, just like Jeremy's doing now. Okay guys, so that's secure now. This is nice and stout all the way across. And now the only braces we have left are the ones that go across the front. And those holes are gonna line up nicely because it's all, it's, it's uh, secured in the back and secured in the front. So the holes should line up good for us. We'll show you that next. All right, now we're gonna put in the brace all the way in the front. Let me back off and show you which one these guys are putting on. We're up top. Where we have D and what is this letter here? I'm not looking. I'm, two D's. Two D's. So we got a D and a D lined up. And on that end over here, we got a C and a C lined up. Same thing as we did in the back. All right, the, all four bolts are in position for that. And Jeremy's just going to tighten them up. be careful with an impact wrench guys he does this every day so he knows when to let off but you you don't want to over tighten this uh, uh, and crush that aluminum you can do that if you get crazy with it these are lock nuts backed up with a lock washer we got double safety on that all stainless steel bolts and brass nuts so it won't corrode on you but you don't want to over tighten that and crush your aluminum just keep that in mind if you're using an impact wrench all right so we got a brace in the back that you duck your head under to come in. This is the forward brace up high that holds it, it makes it all rigid. 
The rest of our braces are going to go here. They're labeled J and H on this side and G and I on this side so you know which end to put which and those holes are going to line right up. You don't have to wallow any holes out or twist it and pull it, try to make it fit. It all should line up perfectly. We'll show you that next. All right, guys, on the next brace we're doing is the very front one. Lined up H to H right there on that side. Watch that shadow, Jeremy. And lined up J to J on this side. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you get your bolt kit and you're putting them together, there are some little bit longer bolts. These bolts are a little bit longer than the other ones for these front two pieces because they have to go through a thicker piece of aluminum. So don't use your long bolts up there where you don't need them and then not have long enough bolts to go down through here. There's only going to be one, two, three, four, eight bolts that this long. Save your eight longest bolts for your forward two most braces that go across the top. That's it, one more brace to go across there. All right, we've placed the last brace across there, H to H, across to the other side, G to G. Bolts slip right through, all we gotta do is tighten them up. And that will be everything bolted across ways that goes crossways, and the blind will be completely assembled, minus the head cover, which we'll show you next. All right, guys, now we're putting on the head cover, and it'll only fit in these sockets. It's got four sockets, one, two, three, four, all the way down. It'll only fit in there one way. If you try to put it up there backwards, you'll, these won't line up. That'll be over here somewhere if you try to put it in the wrong way. So it's easy to determine how it goes, and all four of these will line up just like that all the way down. <clears throat> and you're going to start off by putting your bolts in the back hole closest to the frame. You're going to put that bolt in there closest to the frame. All right. Then he's going to go ahead and put a nut on that and hold it. And we're going to walk to the other end and do the same thing. All right. Let's go to the other end. Put a bolt on that side. These holes that are drilled right there are drilled small, the same diameter of the bolt, so that there won't be any slack and play in those. That makes it a little difficult to find the hole the first time to get it through there, but you can see he didn't have too much trouble doing it. So he'll put nuts and bolts on the back side of those, and then we'll go and do the same thing on the two middle supports. He's gonna do that same thing here, and that same thing here. Then the, 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 it's, that becomes a hinge. Those bolts he's putting in become a hinge for this top lid to fold down when you want it to. And we'll hold it up by pins. And you can remove the pins from these secondary holes right there. We'll show you that in just a minute. All right, so he's tightening up the last one. Now, now you can see that your head cover can pivot out if you want and you pin it in place in these secondary holes. You can put a pin in every one of them if you want to, but one pin will hold that up really. Uh, you can put one on each end, one on this end, one on the end down there if you want, but you don't really have to support that with pins all the way through. And you know, you may not move this thing much. You may just decide to, when you come in, to keep your head ducked down and stay underneath it. But don't forget, you're going to have brush coming from here out. And you're going to have brush from here coming up so when you pull that pin and lower that down it opens up this whole area for you to not have to duck your head till you get all the way to the front and get your boat situated and get your boat, boat spud pole down and then you can fold that back up and put the pin in it and all your brush will be stuck back out like this that's it guys that's how you put one together all right guys what we've done is we've supplied you with a, a welded aluminum rod on here to attach something to. Now that can be netting, 
That can be polyester fishing netting like you use on the fast grass duck blinds. That can be armo, army camo netting like you get from Camo Systems, which is a great, great base layer for this blind. That's what I used. I used army camo netting from Camo Systems to 10 foot by 20 foot sections will cover this whole boat. And I think they're about 75, 80 bucks a section. And it'll cover this entire boat all the way down to the water line and cover your pontoon. So that's, um, that's what I used. And I put it on here and I attached it to these round rod pipes that we have. We have, of course, you can attach it up top to the frame, then attach it here, then attach it here. And we also got you one down at the bottom so you can attach it low so you don't have it flapping from, from this section. It's also one down there you can attach to. You can use army camo netting for that or netting of any kind you want. Or you can get this wire fencing like you get from Lowe's, like this, and just attach it with tie wires to those cross uh, round pipes like that and do the same thing. But you need something. You need something for attaching your natural vegetation or fast grass or whatever it is that you're going to use you're going to have to lay a base layer of some type of netting on here for that we don't provide that at this point in time that's just something that you have to put on there yourself because there's so many options and so many different ways you can do it that's the first thing you're going to want to do is put some type of base layer netting down and strap it tight that wire that donald's holding right there is pretty good because it stays tight it's good and rigid and it's easy to attach to it's about 50 bucks a roll, something like that, 50 feet of it. It's not that expensive. You can get it at Lowe's. Or you can use the Army camo netting, which will also supply you with a base layer of camo that you can't see through. But you have to tie strap it tight. So a couple of ways. Just thought we'd point that out and show it to you while it was here.